Well, howdy folks and uh, welcome back to the shed. So um, today in the mail I received a Victron shunt, their smart shunt, and I thought I'd do a video on that. Um, I got this one as an open box, so it didn't come in the original box, but that's what came in the box there. We've got the, the shunt and a couple lead wires, and then the instructions. And so what I thought I would do is basically hook it up step by step with the instructions um, using the a Victron um, charge controller, a couple solar panels, and we'll connect a load to it with whatever inverter I got laying around. And we'll just kind of go for it and see what happens. And we'll compare it with some of the other shunts that I have explored. And we'll see how it adds up. Now, I already have the uh, Victron app loaded up, so we don't have to worry about that. And it should connect right up via Bluetooth. Um, down the road, we'll get the... Um, Servo XX or whatever it is, and we'll get that going. We'll do some Wi-Fi stuff with it. But hey, let's go ahead and get the show on the road, and let's take a look at what we got here, and let's get out the materials we need. You'll notice I've already, you know, I've got everything connected here with my um, smart solar charge controller. I've got my negative running here to the negative bus bar. I've got my positive running here to the positive bus bar, which will eventually hook to the battery. Um, this will go to the shunt here on the negative and you'll see that in a moment. I have my PV panels connected and in place and running right down over here to an on off switch, a circuit breaker. And we're running this um, Canadian solar 295 watt polycrystalline pa uh, panel. Okay, so I kind of have the shunt I have the shunt mounted to a little block of wood here just for demonstration purposes only and basically I would have this mounted directly to the surface I'm going to mount it to and it would be in this configuration here. Um, but for today's purposes we're going to go ahead and mount it like this. We're going to mount it right up against the surface like that and we're going to go ahead and get it connected. Okay, so now that we have the um, shunt mounted, we're going to take the negative terminal or the negative lug and the uh, battery wire over to the negative two battery minus on top of the shunt here, okay? Let's go ahead and take care of that really quick. And then this side here, according to the instructions, is just going to go directly onto this side and this is two system minus on the left side here so the system is basically going to be the bus bar and then off of the bus bar we're also going to attach our inverter for the load as you can see on this side here on this terminal here we've got on the right side of here we've got a V battery plus so we're going to run one of these wires here from there, we'll just snap her into there and that's going to come over to our positive terminal and then we'll hook our positive terminal into the bus bar. That just kind of clicks right into place just like that. Now, let's go ahead, this should actually be up and charging as soon as I turn on the panels here. So let's go ahead and see if we can find it in the app first. Okay, so I already had the app in place and I've already connected the uh, smart controller and the old shunt just popped right up. No problems at all. She's connecting right now. Could be just that easy. Wouldn't that be something? Okay, now we tried six zeros, and she's bucking up, folks. So right now, oh, we're in business, look at this. Unsecure access, we're gonna go not now. 13.56 volts, um, current zero, hey. Instant readout, okay. We'll just enable that now, that's fine. Okay, so we're gonna click up here. And basically it's like first use setup. Below parameters must be configured before other settings can be made. So 
let's go to battery capacity and this is a 30 amp battery 30 amp hours we're going to say okay and auxiliary input none right now okay um, let's go alarm everything's disabled I'm fine with that let's see what's in miscellaneous that all looks pretty good to me and then we're not going to do anything with smart networking right now rid of that so right now it's saying that it's fully charged let's go charge voltage let's ramp that up charge voltage at 14.4 okay We've got a zero calibration. I don't think it's at zero. We may just run that battery down for fun, though. Uh-huh. Still saying nothing's happening here. Saying it's fully charged, so... Okay, just to go everything over everything again, um, you know, I've got the inverter connected. Um, we've already gone over how the shunt is connected. Um, to the uh, negative bus bar and then the other side of the shunt at the two battery minus we've got it over to the minus side of the battery okay so I created a pretty big load and I drained this battery all the way to zero and here in a moment I've moved my panel over to here um, we will reconnect the panels and charge it all up and just to confirm let's take a look see here you can see where, let's get the lead on there. About 11.2 volts. That's about where these little EcoWorthies kind of want to disconnect. And then you look over here at the app. Um, hopefully, you get, hopefully you guys can see that. It is 11.26 volts. And it says 36%. We're going to change that, okay? Let's go ahead and go inside where it's a little bit easier to look at. Okay, so what we're going to do is jump over to here. And we're going to click on battery. Okay, so it says a state of charge. Battery state of charge on reset. So state of charge right now, it says 36%. Okay, let's go ahead and change that to zero and go okay. And then we're going to go ahead and charge it up and then we'll come in and we'll click on synchronized state of charge to 100%. So this seems to be pretty straightforward. Okay, so you can see um, state of charge is at 0% and that's what we just set it to. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the panels and we'll watch her climb up and start charging. Okay, and again, that is a um, 295 watt Canadian solar panel. Um, it's a used panel, but still does pretty good and Kind of nice for little things like this. You can see where we're instantly charging um, We're at 14.77 amps. This is a 15 amp charger. So we're in the money um, power wise. We're at 176 watts um, I suppose we could get more out of that if I angled it better. Let's take a look and see what happens. You know, it just didn't make a whole bunch of difference there. Um, got a pretty good angle on the sun. Be interesting if that's just what it could give me. 180 watts now. Well, we'll go ahead and let her climb up and see what happens. Okay, so looks like we got her charged up. Took a couple hours, basically. Um, you can see we're rolling in at about 14.2 volts or something. I just, I, you know, initially I was using this um, custom settings and I switched it back to the Victron um, pre-settings for um, the 
lithium iron phosphate smart battery and I think it's fine actually and so right now what we're going to do is we're going to come into the smart shunt here and now that we're in the smart shunt it's actually saying 100% already but um, we'll set that later no need to show everybody my pin code so basically if we were going to set it to 100% if we went to here if we went to battery and we want to synchronize state of charge um, to 100% we'd go synchronize and we'd say OK and it's done now just like a lot of shunts once it hits 100% and it's been there for a minute um, it pretty much uh, does that automatically so at any rate that's kind of the lowdown of the Victron smart shunt and we're going to be having the um, Servo SX, I believe it is, installed soon. We'll go through that also, so that way we have some internet connectivity and we can monitor things from afar, so to speak, with the uh, Wi-Fi and whatnot. Um, probably here soon, or if you haven't seen it already, depending on what order you're hitting my videos, um, basically I'm going to put this up against the um, Renogy uh, BT300 or whatever they call it. And we're going to put them in line with each other and we're going to do that on my current battery bank and we're going to hook them both up and just kind of see what they both say. And I know there's going to be like a pole position reading, it's going to be a little bit different, but if it's within, you know, spitting distance, we're going to be okay. If it's way off, then well, it's way off. Um, and then eventually, you know, the uh, BT300, the Renogy, that's going to be pulled out and that's going to go to a complete system. Um, we don't know what we're going to do with the system yet. Probably the outdoor kitchen, but we've got some other things coming up. So, at any rate, um, thanks for tuning in, you guys. Um, please like and subscribe. Um, I've never been in this for money, just for learning and helping people learn. But I tell you what, it gets expensive to do all this stuff. And I'm not asking for money from you guys, but if we can get enough subscribers and enough uh, view time, then basically I might be able to get reimbursement or whatever they call it through um, YouTube and help me sponsor some of this stuff. So that, that way, if you guys want to see something and it looks like it's in the budget uh, with a little help from myself, We'll do it. We'll get her up and running. We'll test it. We'll put her through the gamut. Um, we'll figure out how to make it work. All right. Uh, so what can I say? That's pretty freaking awesome, dudes.